Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, True Crime with Jess Rose. Um, I hope you're all doing okay. Fifth week of isolation for us all. Well, some maybe more, some less. Um, but yeah, fifth week for me. Uh, but all safe and stuff, and I hope you all are too, and keeping safe. Um, thank you to my new subscribers this week. Um, really appreciate it, and all my comments and stuff. Um, and yeah. Um, this week I want to share a story with you there was one I was going to do and I can't I can't do it I, I can't I started getting the paperwork together and oh I don't know I'm going to say three men and a hammer um if you know the story ugh and you'd like me to do it, I can still do the story. Probably going to struggle with the name slightly. Um, but yeah, if if the name's piqued your interest, I will warn you now. Just, just, just putting that out there. I'm probably warning you not to watch it. Um, but if you do, let me know what you think. Three men and a hammer. Ugh. Just, that's what it does. But I'm not doing that one uh, this week or... Just let me know. Let me know. Um, this week I want to do a story that I actually seen on the Investigation Discovery Channel. Um, and on there it's called Murder on CCTV. Um, great programme. Um, and there's another one that this story appears on called See No Evil. Um, and I hadn't heard of it before, came across it and not just for a couple of reasons, it was like, oh my goodness, this poor girl. Um, and the girl I'm talking about, Kelsey Smith, um, oh, stunning looking girl, 18, a petite dark haired girl, um, uh, just graduated high school, you know, everything to live for. Really nice girl. She was born on the uh, 3rd of May 1989. Um, her dad was a policeman out in Kansas. Uh, they live in, o lived in Overland Park, Kansas. Um, her mum, who appears on the show, just seemed to absolutely dote on her. Um, and yeah, just a really popular, nice girl. And basically, Kelsey had been seeing a lad for six months. And on the 2nd of June 2007, um, she goes to a shop, it's in America, it's in America obviously, um, called Target. Um, and she was going there to pick him up a gift for their six month anniversary, really sweet. And um, she finds a mum in the shop, um, just after I think half six, and tells her mum what she's doing. And then that's it disappears off the face of the earth no one can get through to her her boyfriend's constantly texting her her mom her friends look like such really popular girl and look like, nothing no no come back now this was one thing i'll say about this story everything happened really quickly really really quickly um i don't know if it's because her dad was in law enforcement I'm not too sure I can't I can't say that I can speculate on it um but it, it all happened really quick and basically the mum tells the dad you know she was here and no one can get in touch with her so automatically he's you know they're they're, they're worried and they go to a couple of her friends uh, go to the target so I don't know if it's a supermarket or not a supermarket like a um Bit of bits and pieces, like a bit of everything. I'm not too sure, but um, they go to that car park because that was the last place her mum had spoken to her. And they don't obviously see her, see her car, everything's shut down. But they look across the road and there's a Macy's. I think that's a like department store in America. Um, and her car's there, parked very randomly. So they phone her mum and dad. And they say, look, her car's not where you said it'd be. It's actually across the road. But 
it's empty. Her stuff's in there. Her purse. The stuff she'd bought for her boyfriend's in the car. No sign of her. So the mum and dad pull up. The police come at the same time. And it's only been a couple of hours. Um, and this is what I'm on about. About her dad being in law enforcement. Because aren't you supposed to give it a couple of hours? I mean, she was 18. But this is within a... I mean, they're supposed to give you 24 hours. I think this is within a couple of hours. Look, the police are on the scene. They're all there. Um, and the mum straight away says she'd have never a part like that. She'd have never left a car like that at all. Um, you know, keys are there, purse, bag, everything's there. So they, they know they have to open the boot. And they open the boot, but it's empty. And they're like... What do, it's not Loi Carr. You know, she wouldn't she hasn't run away that you know she was well known. Everyone knew she wouldn't have done that. All her stuff's there. So if you're gonna run away, you're not gonna leave your car and your bag and purse and you know, everything was left there. Um except her phone. Her phone wasn't there. So her mum, while the police go away and they go to uh, find the CCTV footage from Target because I know that was the last place her mum was where she was. Um, her mum goes home and she phones up at Kelsey's telephone provider and she says, I need you to ping my daughter's phone because she knew, obviously, Kelsey had her phone on her. She's like, I need you to trace her. And I'm like, no, but privacy laws, etc. So... The telephone providers were not willing to help at that point at all. Um, you know, fair play to the mum. You know, she was proper. In, there's something going on with my daughter. She wouldn't do this. Um, now, the police, like I say, had got the CCTV footage from Target and were going through it bit by bit. And you see Kelsey pull into the car park of Target. She was where she said she'd go. Um, you see her walk around the store, you see her on the phone to her mum, so they all that tied in. Um, you see her leave the shop with her little purchases, a little wrapping paper and, you know, every, every such thing. You see her, you know, all leaving, we get to see it as well. Um, you see her leaving in real time, that's what I mean, so sad. Because you see just this girl putting around, you know, all the time in the world, on the phone to her mum. You see her leave the store. And you see her go to a car, put her shopping away, uh, I think in the boot, um, go around to the driver's side, get in and pull out. And you see it, and you see it happen. And you're like, right, okay, very strange. So there's a two hour gap between her leaving the uh, parking lot of the Target to leave her car appears again at Macy's. Um, and like I say, it's a two hour time frame there where she's obviously missing, does it, nothing. So when they um, go to Macy's to have a look at their footage, they see, that because they know obviously when the car was found, so they, they've got that two hour bracket. It's very clever. Um, they, they, so they know what time they're looking for. And sure enough, there a car pulls in. But you see it yourself, the, it's 2007. You know, I'm not saying the CCTV footage wasn't, it was awful, but it wasn't, certainly wasn't great. It was quite grainy. Um, the street lights were on the camera and the headlights were kind of pointed at the camera. So you've seen the driver's door open, you've seen someone disappear behind the back, but you couldn't make them out. They couldn't tell if it was Kelsey herself, someone else. You know, it was really hard and you were looking. Um, so they, they're kind of stuck and they're like, you know, where is this girl? So the mum tells them, you know, I'm trying to get the uh, cell phone provider, the phone provider to give me the details of where her phone is. So the local police try, the provider won't let the details out. And after, I think it's about 12 hours, the FBI, FBI were involved very quickly. Um, they try and get her details and they're just saying no. So they're still looking over the CCTV footage at the same time. 
and you see it happen in real time, they slow it down and all of a sudden, I can't say I've seen it before it was said on the show, I can't even pretend, but once it was pointed out, you were like, oh my God, you see her come out of the shop, got drop her shopping in, walk round to her driver's side and just off camera, like a flash, you see someone run, look like huddled and run towards the car and put her in the car. Oh, and you just thought, as you're watching it, you just thought, how many times do you go shopping? Completely oblivious of people around you. Certainly once you, go to, certainly once you get to your driver's side of your car, I don't know about you, I mean, I can be quite, um, you know, paranoid maybe sometimes, but I wouldn't, I, I open my car door and I think, don't forget, this is, I think it's seven o'clock in the evening, it's light, there's a lot of cars around, you see cars either side of hers, and you just like, just take them, just like that. So the, obviously, like I say, the FBI are involved, they know it's a kidnapping now, um, they're trying to still push the telephone provider, you know, she's got her phone on her, but days are going by, you know, her phone's possibly dead, but it could give, look, where she was when the phone went dead, they still wouldn't release that. At the same time, they're like, right, okay, it's someone in the car park, what we need to do is go back and see if it was someone who was possibly watching her in the shop so again it goes back to the record you know it's very sad because you see the same footage over and over again of this girl oblivious to what's going on around her she's tiny um and as you're watching it because we know we're looking for someone as a viewer you know oh 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 i gotta admit i got it wrong completely and it was actually a guy, he was very good, he was very good because it wasn't easily spotted. Um, it was a guy in a white t-shirt and blue shorts. And he was following her around the shop. And when they zoomed in on this guy, you could see where his eyes were turning, like following her, even though he was facing this way, he was looking that way. Um, so they knew, knew who it was now, they, were, they had an interest in. So, as he came out of the shop before her, they watched it all back. He came in after her and he left before her. Um, they got a still of his face as close as they could and released it, released it straight away. We need to, this is a person of interest in this case. Um, and then, then what they did, they knew that, he would have to come back for his truck or whatever m m uh, form of transport he'd got there in. So they went back to the Macy's uh, footage, seen what time he dropped her car off, which was, I think it was half nine, um, and then went back to the Target footage to watch to see if he came back and collected his car. Now, they didn't see him, but you see a blue truck drive out you know and it's only across the road so it's all very quick um and yeah it's a bit of blue a blue chevy so they released that as well um and so on the where are we oh, sorry on the 6th of june the telephone provider finally finally release um kelsey's cell phone details uh you know where it was last pinged and basically because her boyfriend had sent her so many messages where are you you know please contact me please phone you know and other people um it, it pinged a certain area that was 18 18 to 20 miles away from um where what where, where the target of macy's was um, and it was called Longview Lake, like a wooded area. So I got there and unfortunately they found Kelsey. Um, she'd been strangled with her own belt and she'd been sexually assaulted. 
cause of death was strangulation. And, uh, you know, it was four days later. So you just, you just can't, am I, being on the phone to your daughter, expecting her home any minute and then that happens. She drives, she's not walking, she's not on a push bike. She's got a car, you would think she'd be safe. Um, now when they found her, she had branches on her that had been put in kind of a pentagon shape, they said. So at first they were a little bit like, is this a cult? You know, is this what's happened? Um, but in her, in Kelsey's car, when they, you know, done what they needed to do to get forensic evidence, etc., um, they find a partial fingerprint, or a full, one fingerprint, I think it was, on the seatbelt. So they had that. They'd released the picture of the person of interest. They'd released his truck. Um, and basically it said that he'd gone to work, the, the owner of the truck, and while he was in work, the advert come up. Not the advert, like the, um, the news report saying, you know, have you seen this person, drug, possibly drugs his truck, you know, person of interest. And this lad turns around to this other guy and he goes, isn't that your truck? And he's looking outside at this guy's truck, which is very similar. Next thing you know, this guy goes into his bus and says, I'm ill, I've got to go home. Now, the guy I'm talking about is called Edwin Hall and he's 26. Um, and Edwin goes into his bus and says, I'm ill, I've got to go home. And when the police, um, obviously, because they sorry, I've skipped ahead of myself. The lad who'd seen his truck at work, after watching him do a runner out of the building, obviously really suspicious, phones up the police and says, you know, comes forward with a, you know, this, this lead. Now, they were getting a lot of leads over this time, um, you know, with the, the photo going out and the truck. But there was something about this one and they went out and as they pulled up outside Edwin's house he was packing the truck I don't know why I just did that because it was the truck so I don't know why I've done that ignore that wipe that from your memory ridiculous um so yeah so he's he's he's, he's filling the truck with all his stuff and packing and I could walk a wife and a four-year-old child and he's gone home from work and says, we're going, we're going on holiday, vacation. And he's packing up to go. So they were very lucky to obviously catch him when they did. And um, they hauled him in and started questioning him. And, you know, he says, yeah, I did say, I know the girl you're talking about. You know, I thought she was cute. Apparently he said she had nice legs or something. But that was it. And I left. Um, but they ran his fingerprints while he was there. I remember I said they had the partial fingerprint on the seatbelt. Um, and it was the match. It was him. Within four days. The day she was found was the day he was found too. Coincidentally, actually, you know, through the, the teeth. And obviously have been found, which is, it's just so upsetting, but... Yeah, on the 6th of June, he was found later on in the afternoon after she'd been found. And, you know, they were still wondering, is he part of a cult and stuff? And they ran all his details. And, you know, he, he'd had no um, criminal record as an adult. But when they went back further as a juvenile, he'd, he'd done a couple of violent things. He'd hit someone with a baseball bat. He'd assaulted an ex-girlfriend, like a girlfriend. Um, you know, he wasn't a nice guy. And he was only 26. So I don't know, does the juvenile thing, is he 18 and below? So, you know, he hadn't been good for that long. Um, but it, it just... And they said he had a MySpace page, which says he looked to eat children and harm... Eat young children and harm animals. Weird, but you do see him. Weasley looking fella, Weasley, horrible looking guy. And he basically, 
he knows he's bang to roll it, especially with the fingerprint, the truck, everything. They've, you know, they've got his photo. They've got him following around the shop. The prosecution are going for the death penalty on this guy. Um, and he's actually charged with um, premeditated first-degree murder, aggravated kidnapping and, and rape. And they're going for the death penalty. So he strikes a plea deal with them. He says, I'll plead guilty. I'll admit it all to all charges, you know, if, if you don't go for the death penalty. What a coward. What an absolute coward. And, you know, he gets the, uh, they get him to tell them what happened. And he'd gone out that day to, to, to do that to somebody. It wasn't to her. She was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, which is even more gut-wrenching. You know, he'd seen her pull in to the car park, watched her, followed her around the shop for a bit and thought, it's going to be you. And he says, when he seen her get to the, uh, you know, the cashier, he left the store, went, ran back to his truck, got his gun, waited for her to come out, waited for her to open, you know, her, side, her, her driver's door. And that's when he pounced. He says he, he came up behind her. Because all he did wonder, you know, could she have screamed? Could she have said? It was, it was packed. There was cars everywhere. But when he said, look, like, he'd got his gun and she was at gunpoint, you can understand. So like, she must have been terrified. And then he drives 20 miles away. Rapes, a strangles her with her own belt, drives back, drops her car just to the car park opposite, doesn't even try and hide it. Pops over the road, that's probably why actually he drove himself back to his car. Pops over the road, grabs his car and goes home to his wife and child. Look, the whole thing took, what, what was it, two hours? And a poor 18 year old girl who just graduated high school. Life just gone. Going to pick up a, a boyfriend's, you know, an anniversary present for a boyfriend. I just, I think that's what got me. It was just like, really, just going shopping. He didn't know her. He hadn't been what, you know, they said it was premeditated, obviously, because he'd watched her go in. He'd followed around. He admitted he had every intention of killing someone that day. But I mean, he hadn't been. Uh, stalking her, he wasn't an ex-boyfriend, stalking her for any length of time, I mean, he wasn't an ex-boyfriend, he didn't know her from Adam, she was literally just in the wrong place at the wrong time, literally that was it, he said she could have been anybody, just rotten. On the 16th of September 2007, obviously he pled guilty, um, so Edwin Hall was sentenced to life without parole for the obviously premeditated murder, kidnapping and rape of Kelsey um, Smith. And I just thought, when I watched it, I just thought, just a waste, utter waste. All my stories I say all the time, you know, and I'm like a broken record, but I just, none of them, there's, it doesn't make sense to me. And this one, you know, he didn't know her. He, he'd never seen her before that day. He admitted he'd never laid eyes on this eyes on this girl. And within ten minutes of watching her walk around the shop, he decided your your life's done now. I'm going to end your life now over the next two hours. And no, no remorse, nothing. Um. Now, obviously, what I mentioned earlier on was about the cell phone provider um you know not giving the information and possibly if oh, it was all it, she was killed in two hours so she was already we know she was already dead you know by the time my car was found so it's not like they could have been taken to court because they could have saved her life because they couldn't have, like I say, it had already happened. He'd already dropped the car back and and made his way home, but so my car was found. Um, you know, but she could have been found sooner. 
you know, to think of your child being a left eye in the woods for four nights, you know, it's just heartbreaking. So Kelsey's mum and dad, you know, afterwards, uh, you know, they didn't want to, they didn't want it to be in vain. They didn't want Kelsey to be forgotten, um, you know, which is a credit to them. You know, it's a credit to all parents that are doing these stories where they go on to, you know, fight for their child's name and to save other people. I just think it's it's commendable. Um, and what they, what her mum and dad fought for is that in a life or death situation, regardless of data protection, and data protection, etc., in a life or death situation, that all mobile phone providers must give that information over, you know, to the FBI. And they've said no, it's really easy. It's literally the police have to fill in a form, send it off, and they get the information back. But Kelsey's mum and dad did that. You know, and it's actually called the Kelsey Smith Act. You know, and they did that, I think, in 2008. Um, you know, because now it seems common sense that if someone's missing and, you know, it, a kidnapped, you know, hasn't come home, you know, you can find them. But them. I think you have to prove that they're in imminent danger. You know, it can prove that it's completely not like them. They haven't just done a runner. You know... You, there would be so many things, and the police would obviously do that because the police wouldn't get involved if it was simply, oh, we think they've left left for a few days, or you know. So, I kind of take that for granted that that's a given now that they would do that. I didn't realise that, obviously, two thousand seven and prior that they wouldn't give that information out. That's scary, you know. The the girls missing, they could possibly. They didn't know they weren't gonna say they, that it wouldn't save a life. They didn't know that, and they they wouldn't just hand that information over. I get that, you know, look, <sighs> protection in the sense of, you know, some weirdo could just find where someone is. I, I get that, you know, the privacy laws and stuff. But I think everything's got to be treated on a merit. And when you've got the FBI. You know, coming down on you saying, we need this knife to find this girl. And the start, like, no, computer says no. You know, sorry. If you don't know Little Britain, that was completely, you think I'm a weirdo. Um, yeah, it, it, it it's just scary to think that that was something that, you know, the police weren't able to, you know, they weren't able to get like that. But that's the Kelsey Smith Act that they got passed. Um, to keep us all that little bit safer and it has worked it, you know they mentioned that there was um, a baby who'd been kidnapped um, by a known pedophile that had hurt numerous children in the past and they found the baby they were able to um, was it, I think the mum's phone had been left in the car it'd been kidnapped I, think, oh, I hope I'm not confusing two stories but I know they found the child and there's been other stories where it's it's saved, it's saved lives, that law being passed. So I just thought that's amazing. So there was two reasons I wanted to do this story. One, because what a brilliant thing our parents did that we take for granted now. Not even take for granted, I just didn't think it would be something they'd say no to, to be honest, in a, in a, in a, in a lawful, lawful death situation. Um, and also, Always check behind you when you're opening your driver's door. Something I, I've never thought about until I watch this. You know, that there'd be someone lurking in between cars on a summer's evening in a packed car park. You know, while you're putting around, minding your business. You know, it, it was just it, just a shocking case. But, yes, thank you very much again for joining me this evening. Um, I don't know how to end it again. I don't, it's uh, it's obviously got a, the, the Kelsey Smith Act is just amazing, it's just shocking that it, you know, they said, you know, the fact that this happened, to bring that into place, it's just, 
you know, would it have been something that would have come forward without that happening? It's just very sad. But thank you all for joining. I was going off on a roll ramble then. Um, thank you again for joining me, everyone. Stay safe. And I will, I have got clothes on, sorry. I'm very burnt, as you can see. Looking a bit like a crab stick. We've had some lovely weather here. Um, so yeah, it's it saved me from going crazy this week. Um, but yeah, all stay safe and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.